there are consequences when you impugn them laws. yes when you pin the laws yeah all right let's go to our next story you know the games of the of the 33rd olympiad entered uh, ended rather in the french capital paris needless to rub it in that we did not win a medal at the biggest global sporting event on the planet one can safely say though that the global sports community was waiting for our golden girl to be a motion to make a bold statement to think that team nigeria had 12 billion naira invested on 88 athletes with no returns nigerians are naturally scandalized by the dismal outing despite the monetary investment begs the question of what to do with the next game slated for los angeles united states of america in 2028 Bikil. I, I am, <laughs> I'm scandalized because <laughs> what I hate to see is progress and then suddenly drop the ball. You start seeing us um, uh, taking back steps mm. at a time ne need needlessly at a time when we felt we had made um, a giant leap. Oh yeah, the Chinese who took that leap which mm. the Americans had uh, popularized, became something that the former leadership of the sports ministry, headed by uh, Sunday Dari, adopted. And we saw clear signs that this was uh, beginning to bear fruits. And how do you argue that it was bearing fruits? For the first time, yeah. Nigeria had an athletics champion, a world champion in athletics. We had never produced a world champion in athletics until Tobia Munchon came, you know, to came to the bus, scene. Yeah. And she even set two records in one day. That's it. Which is only an two world meet. records. Two world records. Yes. She set two world records in one day. And the whole world was like ah Biko, where did this guy come she, from she she was waiting for the first olympics in her life and we all felt that okay this had to be her year i was reading an interview that she granted she said this is my year okay because to be emotion is even capable of running the 100 meters i mean oh, yeah. being one of the uh, quarter i mean the nigerian but, quarter no? Biko, please meter please quarter. I, I hope i'm i'm not too fast here yeah. there was ophili and ophili who was not registered, but she she qualified for the final of the 200 meters. Yes. So imagine an Ophili pairing with uh, an emotion and two others for mm -hmm. the relays. It, you see, for the relays, I think that we did badly in the relays. Oh, yes. And this had been our strength over the oh, years. Yeah. Remember, when we had Chidimo, when we had uh, uh, the uh, Ezinwa brothers, Ezinwa, when we had yeah. Innocent Egunike, who, who set an African record mm. uh, um, in the 400 meters. Egunike had actually contested at Quaspo 80. Mm. And okay, I watched okay. him win the 100 meters competition at Quaspo 80 mm. for secondary school students. I watched okay. him in 1980 win that race okay. and went on to become um, it, uh, it, it, uh, it, a, a global star, you know. Sorry, remember an African president who, after watching him, that is the Arab Moin. I said, this man, you are no you are longer not innocent. Any, because innocent. look, we, the race had been the, the race had been damaged. <laughs> if I can use the four, oh, yeah. four okay. by four hundred meters, oh, yeah. had been damaged. Ebunike, who used to be uh, involved in the short sprints, hundred and two hundred meters, okay. you yeah. know. It was converted to 400 meters. Yes. And then, after the race had been damaged, so to say, so to speak, and yeah. we had lost hope that we would get a medal. It came from nowhere. It came from no, uh, nowhere. Just the same way that an uh, nephew did yeah. some years back. Okay. He overtook them and won the race. So, uh, the late president, Arab Moe, Arab Moe. because it was happening in his country, <laughs> he said, before he, many of before this. his eyes. He said, ah. And it was, you know, on the final day, Said no, so, so this that's innocent. your emotion. That's your emotion. Yes, uh, <laughs> this innocent is not innocent. Too. You are not you innocent. Know, those were the glory days. We were clearly the best in Africa in yes. athletics. Now the short sprints where we used to do well, we we now see uh, South Africans, people from Botswana, people from Cote d'Ivoire, you know, dealing with us in the short sprints. Oh, yeah. So we can't even say, okay, Nigeria today in athletics, this is 
where you are quite today in Ghana, there was the African meet, mm. you know, and we dusted the, Afri uh, the, the continent, everybody and our uh, really teams and so see, on. See, that's what I'm saying, that in the short sprints, mm. we used to thoroughly dominate Africa with the likes of um, Mary Yali, Tina Ehiagwam. Tina Ehiagwam uh, and Mary Yali, they were rivals for the short sprints. Okay. And both of them excelled at world junior championships. Yeah. We used to be world champions in 100 meters, huh. you know, at the junior level. Yes. That was okay, how people like uh, Tina Ehiagwam, people like Mary Yali, that was mm. how they came. They started from the juniors. They yeah. were champions and you know, and the Mola uh, Day uh, Academy and uh, Tai um, and uh, Taiwo Academy. Okay, you know, we have yeah. we yeah. have we have Omo Tayo and Omola Day Academy doing the hurdles and doing very well. Today we don't have uh, we don't have good athletes anymore. I, 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 I mean, in terms, I don't I, we don't I, have. I, I cannot I cannot forget Olakwa De Adenika. Yeah, Olakwa De Adenika, student of uh, CNS College, Ilone. Yes, I yes. used to watch him as a secondary school student running in those in, uh, invitational relays. And his father was a, uh, a member of the Athletics Federation in Kwara State. Okay. And then they had Coach uh, Momo. Coach Momo brought him up. And then when uh, um, uh, the, the, this legendary coach from Edo State okay. uh, took him up, the, um, um, uh, the, Urobo, Tony Urobo, the, the, one the of the greatest Alisman, athletics Al coaches to yeah. come out of Nigeria, Tony Urobo, yeah, I remember. was the one who further brushed him up. And Adeniken became one of the best in the world, especially in 200 meters. So when we are going to Olympics, we know that in Niger I mean, two Nigerians or three, we will be in the final of the 100 okay. meters. Okay. But today, look at where we are. Okay. Um, uh, before, Imagine let, let, a country as small as St. Lucian, producing a, a double, double Olympic medal winner. And she made, she made a meal of it. You, and, you, do you what, blame her? What do you expect? So you look at our country. How do we explain the fact that we went to the Olympics and we didn't win anything? All right. How on earth? <laughs> play, play, play. Well, it's yeah, always play. happened without consequences. Because uh, let me let me say that some con in, in the past Wait. we did yeah. badly. Yeah, yeah. Big oh, sorry, sorry. I, I, I know you are not as. Uh, no, let me. Uh, we will go to our friends. But yeah. I said, nineteen fifty-two, we didn't win anything. Okay. Nineteen fifty-six, we didn't win anything. Yeah. Nineteen sixty, we didn't win anything. Mm -hmm. Nineteen sixty-eight, we didn't win anything. Nineteen eighty, we didn't win okay. anything. That was in Moscow. Nineteen eighty-eight, we didn't win anything. And twenty twelve, we didn't win anything. So, are we trying to make this a way of life? I hope not. I hope not. Oh, oh, okay. Let's take this uh, commercial break. We should be back shortly. Please stay with us. and cable great quality now with the new look all right folks welcome back uh, time to join our colleagues well we will move over to our studio in abuja where uh, hassan wada and francis obi are waiting yeah brother hassan are you there and uh, francis i greet you one more time and the good thing is yeah, Francis you. actually good evening, uh, uh, was you for at the games me. as chairman of uh, the Badminton Federation. Uh, uh, Brother Francis, you were at the games. Uh, I hear you. You are chairman of the Badminton Federation, right? Yes. President. Yeah, but how, how, do, how do you react to this scenario? Because the thing, what, what happened? The, the thing uh, played, played out before your eyes. 
Yeah, I was there. Okay, so then. Now, um, how do I react? So I can look at it from two different angles, uh, from the angle of my sport specifically, and then from the angle of Team Nigeria generally. So from the angle of my sport, I would say that, um, you know, yes, at the end of the day, the bottom line is how many medals are you able to win? And what, you know, what was the level of uh, performance? So um, before we went, I will share this. There was a meeting with the ministry, and um, all the different sports that went for the Olympics were asked to make projections and say how many medals each sport was expecting. Mind you, we went with only one player, which was in the men's singles. So, I mean, the other sports, people came and made projections, promised medals. Some were not sure of the color, but we were sure of medals. But when I was called upon, I stood up and I said, well, I do not want to raise anybody's hopes here. I want to be very realistic. And I'll start by giving a background. One, uh, we went to the Olympics to, to, uh, for the event, that's men's singles. In the history of uh, badminton in Nigeria, we've never qualified for men's singles before. So it was the first time that Nigeria was going to participate. And for us, that was already a positive before we went. And then the player who went also, in the history of the game, no Nigerian in badminton has gone for two Olympics. Everybody that has gone for Olympics in badminton has gone for only one. He is the first player. So in Tokyo, he went for doubles, and this time around, he went. So I started on that note. So I said, for us as a federation, we were going with a mindset. We looked at the performance of Africa in the badminton event at the Olympics over the years, and we were not very satisfied. It's always been very poor because generally, Badminton is not seen as an African game, it's seen as an Asian game. So we are never seen to be even competitive. So when we go, we are beating 21-2, 21-5, 21-6, and we lose out in the first round. So we said what we wanted to achieve as a federation was to go there and compete. If possible, go beyond the first round, and after that, anything can happen. So we wanted to go and improve on the performance of Africa over the years, and that was my submission. So we went there. And uh, I can tell you that our player <coughs> did very well. In his game, the second game, especially against the world number six from China, he lost 2-0, 21-17, 21-17. At the end of the match, it was like he was the one that won. Because a lot of people didn't believe that an African player could play the game to that level. So he put up, in fact, the African president came to me and said he was proud of the player. He has made Africa proud for once. And in fact, that has been the best performance by any African player in badminton at the Olympics. So, if you look at it from that point, I will not tell you that uh, we did very badly. Yes, we didn't win a medal, but uh, our player put up a very good performance, and everybody acknowledged it. It was a standing ovation when he was leaving. So that's badminton. Now, Team Nigeria, and coincidentally, you know, because of his uh, performance, I mean, even before his performance, because of the effort he had made, he was African champion since 2019 he has won four african uh, championships and two all african games back to back so at the end of the day when they were in germany he was nominated to be the team nigeria captain and that was the first time it had, for us in badminton it was a huge it was a huge statement that we are being recognized because i mean all the times we went when there was no time that a badminton player was made captain of team nigeria so it was with all that that we went for the games and um, like you've all observed, at the end of the day, Team Nigeria will not win, uh, did not win any medal. Uh, mm. The expectations were high. I mean, not in a year that we had a world record holder and world champion in Toby Amuso. And then we thought that uh, S.A. Brume had done. I mean, at the last Olympics, she won a bronze medal. So everybody, I mean, we were all hopeful that this time around. So we're all looking up to athletics and also wrestling. We're blessing Oboru Dudu had won a silver medal in Tokyo. Mm. So we're all hoping that something will happen this year. So, but at the end of the day, like you rightly said, I mean, no medal came our way. So um, if you ask me, I would say, I, I hear there's, there's a lot going on, a lot of uh, conversations going on. Um, I will not want to go into the blame game at this point. I would rather uh, focus on lessons learned. Let's do a post-mortem. What were the issues? What, what were the challenges? And I'll tell you, if it's talking about what was responsible, if we want to narrow it down to one individual, I don't think it will be fair. It's a, co it's a collective system completely.
president. Yeah. Yeah. I don't so, think that is the goal. Yes. <coughs> what we want is okay. to, to know what really went wrong. At a time when we had okay. high hopes, look at what happened at the last Olympics. We thought that we would be continue to make progress. Mm. But suddenly, we had this extremely poor performance. And all of the medal hopefuls, some of them didn't even get to uh, the semifinals or even quarterfinals. Some of the people that we banged on, some of them were world champions. Ade oh, yeah. Kuroye, for example. You know, Ade Kuroye could beat anybody. That was, that was how we felt. But she didn't even... She, okay, won, she won a fight. Somebody, uh, the opponent retired due to injury. And then the next fight, she lost. Hmm. Were these losses psychological, uh, the result of um, uh, inadequate... Uh, preparation psychologically did we have psychologists um, or, or, within or, nigeria working or, on our athletes? Or, or for that matter uh, motivation were the athletes motivated enough you just need to know what went okay. wrong okay so um if i may say something i'm happy you asked the question there were there psychologists there uh, mm. you know unfortunately I will tell you that in sports in Nigeria, there are certain critical factors that we don't pay attention to and we don't, we don't think are important. So we went to, uh, Gem, uh, to Germany for the camp, and the Indian player who came there for training had up to how many people in our team? Uh, food nutritionist, sports psychologist, uh, physiotherapist. In fact, about six, seven people, all these taking care of every little need. These are details. But we, I mean, here... I can tell you that uh, we had, I mean, there was a, a psychologist who was moving around all the uh, Team Nigeria, not dedicated to any sport per se. And if you ask me, I don't think that was adequate. But what would I say for this performance? Um, countries, I can tell you, started preparing for this Olympics three years ago. That's the truth. So we were in Paris, the hotel I stayed. Denmark brought an under-19 team. I think it was handball or volleyball. They were staying in the same, same hotel. They didn't come to participate. They came to watch. Every day they went to the venue, and at the end, in the evening, I was observing. They would come. They had a place set up for them. They had a screen. They would play the matches of that day. The coaches would be there analyzing the games with them. My brother, they were preparing for 2028 uh, Los Angeles games. So a lot of times, we wait till the last minute a month to the time, two months. To the, I, I heard somebody say that, um, I mean, uh, we didn't do so much. We, we, we paid so much attention to qualification instead of preparation for the Olympics. But mm. the truth is this. If you don't qualify, you cannot start to prepare for the Olympics. So the first thing to do uh -huh. is qualification. So what the problem is, is that we always qualify much later than most other countries. Olympic qualification window is about a year. Once they say, oh, it has started, you play as many qualifiers. But the truth is this. If in the world ranking, like in badminton, if you are world number two, when the qualification period uh, window opens, you are going to start at world number two. So what you do is to try to maintain your uh, position or even get better. Even if you are world number 50, that's where you will start. So if I tell you that preparation started four years ago, it means that over a period of three, four years, you are playing to maintain and... The qualification window had not closed, but we did all the calculations of others who were in contention in Africa and what other competitions they had open to them. And we were able to be confident that none of them could play and meet up with him and overtake him. That was when we knew. But until he closed at the end, of, I think early May, that was when it was announced that, okay, he has qualified for the Olympics. And at that let's, time, let's I mean, you would expect. That. So I will tell you something, that as a federation, we started yeah. our campaign even before the ministry started. Okay, okay. We'll, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get back to you when the time permits. But, but let me speak with Hassan, Brother Hassan. Um, Hassan, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Thank you for having oh, me on the oh, show. Okay, okay. The name Toby Amushan, I'm, I'm sure, must be on your mind as I speak. Absolutely. Are you, <laughs> uh, uh, aren't you surprised that she, she didn't make a statement? 
at the games? Well, I won't say I won't say I was surprised. You know, Toby Amuson is a she's a human being. You know, going into the Olympics, our best chances of winning medals were from Toby Amuson and Essie Brume. Reason being mm. that Toby Amuson at this point in time going into the Olympics was probably the hottest 110 meter hurdler in the world. And Essie Brume going by the surprise she pulled at the Tokyo Olympics, everybody anticipated that the experience she would have gained from the previous Olympics would have propelled her to win a medal. But you see, I'm not surprised they didn't make it. You see, at the Olympics, that's where your colleagues transform from athletes to machines. They know that this mm. comes in, uh, Olympics are once every four years. It's not like the annual meets that they have where they can run against each other on se several times. But there are athletes that will participate in this Olympics and the next Olympics they will, they will fade out. So when you come to the Olympics, you must come with your A game. You know, in Nigeria, we have the talent, no doubt. But you see, over time, we have not figured out how we want to fund sports in this country. The chairman of the Badminton Federation, if he's to come out openly and tell you that, yes, they qualified in Ghana, but before they could get to Ghana to qualify, they had to struggle to raise funds. And as an athlete, you don't need those kind of um, distractions. Let us ask ourselves, when did we start our training camp in Germany? You know, when did yeah. other countries start their training camp in Germany? You know, I've done a lot of analysis. I've looked at our competitors in Africa. Our competitors in Africa are the likes of South Africa, Botswana, um, Ivory Coast, and all of that. If you look at what they spend on sports compared to what Nigeria is spending on sports, you will know that we have not started. Permit me to just give you some figures. You know, in South Africa, this year, their budget for sports is 6.3 billion rand. 6.3 billion rand in dollars, that's $366 million. Botswana, a country of 2.7 million people, their budget for sports is... What is Nigeria's contribution to their training? Let me tell you, to win an Olympic medal, you need to train... 1,000 hours annually for three. You need your athletic trainer. You need the medicals. It's not rocket science. The world has realized that, you know what, sports is big business. So the era of saying you came and pulled a surprise, you shocked everybody, is non-existent. We are celebrating our women's basketball team, yes. But how many players on the basketball team were, were groomed in Nigeria? Only one player, Murjana Tumusa. And I know what that girl went through before she got a chance to go and play in Spain. And now she played for Nigeria. As I'm speaking to you, Nigeria doesn't have a playable basketball facility in this country. Yet we are celebrating that Nigeria is ranked number 12 in the world. But we don't have a facility. So while we want to complain and blame the athletes, I always tend to look at it from another angle. We must think of a sustainable way of funding sports in this country. Waiting for the ministry will not take us to the promised land. Permit me to give you some models that are being adopted around the world. In okay. Jamaica, they have the Sports Development Foundation. The Sports Development Foundation, they are responsible for funding the federations aside from the other funds that come from the ministry. How do they generate these funds? The lottery in Jamaica, they, the, the, the taxes from lottery go to the Sports Development Foundation. That way, if the chairman of the Badminton Federation in January says, you know what, my athlete must participate in 20 tournaments around the world. They say, okay, what's your budget? He says, my budget is um, $100,000, $200,000. They said, okay, here's your, here's your budget. You must get results for us. They are not waiting for the annual budgetary provisions from the, from the ministry. Because you know how haphazard budgetary provisions are. In South Africa, they are what you call the South African Foundation and, Olymp and, and Olympic Committee. They are responsible for funding federations. Under that program, you have what you call OPEX, Operational Excellence Program. The Operational Excellence Program identifies their medal hopefuls in the Olympics, and they start funding them four years ahead of time. Some of them, even as far as when they are in secondary schools, they start funding them. So this program identifies the best talents that can win medals for them in the future. Once they start funding them, they take them off the federations and say, you know what, federations, these are our babies. These are our potentials that will win medals for us. Go and look for better, more athletes for us. If they fit the criteria, then we will now, we will now adopt them. Yeah, Lastly, bro, bro, let me that, tell that, you, any okay. country, mm. just one point, please, one point, please. Any country okay. you visit in the world, the mecca for athletics is what you call a high-performance center. Mm. I've been to the high-performance center in Pretoria. I've been to several high-performance centers in America. Once you visit an, a high-performance center, what the high performance center does, it converts you from a human being to a machine. In Nigeria, we don't have a high performance center. The best facility we have here is the national stadium. I knew mm. Ogazi, Samuel Ogazi, the, he came seventh in the 400 meters at the Olympics. 
Last year, when he was training for the Trinidad and Tobago, Tobago um, Junior Championship, I was watching him at the stadium there. He was running at the training facility. The training facility there was built in 2002. The tracks there were laid in 2002. The average lifespan of a track is 10 years. We're talking of 22 years later, our, the guy who came seventh in the 400 meters in the Olympics, that was where he was training. We need to do better. We need to think of how we are going to fund sports. Once we sort that problem out, our minister will not be under pressure trying to explain a lot of, uh, how, a, a, a lot of the issues to, to Nigerians. Yeah, bro Brother Hassan, I, at least you are the chairman of the Kogi State Football Association. At the Olympics, we made a statement in 1996, mm -hmm. if you remember. So, is it, is it difficult to build on that, on that achievement? Is it difficult? The question I'll ask you is, what have we done since 1996? Let me answer the question. Many tend to forget. In 1996, we were coming from a sustained, there was sustained investment in football. We had a coach who had been with us, Clemens Westerhoff, came in 1989. He took us to 1994. In 1996, his assistant, Joe Bonfore, was the one who took us to the Olympics. You understand? Mm. And I remember Chioma Ajunwa winning gold in long jump. We didn't expect it. Yes. None of us believed that we could. No one was even watching long jump. <laughs> Everybody was hoping that we would win football. So, yes, we did well. But did we make the right investments for Chioma Ajunwa to win gold? I would say no. You understand? But since then, what has been happening is still been the same haphazard way of trying to fund sports. Not until we change the way fund, we, we fund sports in this country. Trust me, as long as we are waiting for the annual budget, compare the budget from 20, um, 20, London 2012 to, 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 the, to this Olympics. You can see that the budget is, going, is depreciating because of the currency devaluation right. that has taken place over the years. You know? So we need to change the way we fund sports. We fund sports you know? All right. Uh, let, me, let me add this one. Um, boxing um, used to be a strong point for us at the Olympics. Um, not even in Africa. I mean, in the last... Uh, when did we do, do anything tangible in boxing at the Olympics? It's been ages we did anything. Um, I think the last I remember, maybe the likes of oh. Don Kwan Dokwari, when he was um, doing heavyweight Olympic boxing. But again, like I said, it boils down to infrastructure and investment. Mm. Do we have a world-class boxing facility in this country? We don't. So what do you expect? Where are the athletes going to train? Then you look at nutrition. Athletes are coming to train in the morning. They drink pure water and manage maybe puff puff and meat pie. <laughs> After burning all that energy, there are no nutrients, no supplements. After that, they manage one mama put. Maybe eat um, a bar and a goosey or something. You know, that's not how an athlete is, is developed. You understand? An athlete, you treat him like egg. He gets premium nutrients. You know, he must have the right meal set <coughs> to propel him to greatness. See, let me tell you. Yes. Asan, in a nutshell, because we want our people to learn. Oh, yeah. Uh, take us through the American model that ensures that consistently they are excelling in sports and they are the best in the world what is the model how have they been able to work with uh, uh, corporate um, uh, institutions yeah. to fund athletes and to ensure that they create world beaters how do they do it you know in um, in america they have a saying that sports is big business they know that once you get the best out there and they're doing very well, it will be easy to get the private sector involved in sports. In America, they have what you call the Olympic Development Program. I'll narrow it down to, I'll use examples like Nigeria. For example, if you have the Olympic Development Program in Nigeria, it means, for example, at any ward, any local government, at any given point in time, when they ask you who is the best person in football here, they say this person. If they say who is the best 100-meter runner, they have that program across the country. So what ends up happening is that at any given point in time, they already know who their best athletes are across the country. That way, they are able to attract funding. Also, you cannot neglect the fact that they have world-class um, world infrastructure. Some of the time, when we say we are going for training camp in some of these countries, they are giving us secondary school infrastructure to use. You understand? Because they are world-class facilities. But here, can you name any secondary school in Nigeria that even has a decent sporting facility? No. Yes, so even if we want to adopt this program, we must understand that it's multifaceted. First, you must sort out funding for the federations. Secondly, you must sort out your infrastructure challenges. In my humble opinion, the role of the ministry is strictly policy. 
infrastructure development and maintenance. You understand? They need not be involved. The minister need not be involved in telling us who is the fastest 100 meter runner in the country. That's not his business. You understand? The president of the badminton federation is the one who will tell us who the best badminton players are in this country. And this is how, this, these are the programs they're embarking on. And the, please provide the funding for it. You understand? Once we sort out those things, the ecosystem will be solid. And we'll start getting, you see, let me tell you. Nigerians have natural share willpower. I've never seen a country like this in my life where with little they will achieve greatness. Imagine if you do 30% of what's obtainable in some of these countries. We'll be the best country in the world. Yes, sir. All, all right, sorry. But let, let me talk with uh, Brother Francis. Francis Obi. Uh, Brother Francis, let's uh, quickly go through this. Um, I know you remember that an oil major in this country, Mobile, Nigeria, used to fund athletics or put money down at what stage did we drop the ball or what happened <laughs> well well unfortunately i'm not in athletics but i'll tell you something that from I my own experience what, yeah. when i came in I I, I I i realized that we have a huge trust deficit especially in sports administration everybody feels that sports uh, money put to sports is going to be spent and will not be accounted for mm -hmm and uh, it will not be judiciously spent for what it is meant for. So, uh, I, I will tell you from my own federation experience, we have, we have to try and build that confidence and trust. Let people know that if you give us 10 million, that money is going to be spent for what? So, it, it's, it's a very huge problem. I don't know what happened with mobile that uh, they dropped, but I must say something here. Uh, my brother here, in fact, as he was speaking, I was just shaking my head. And that's what it brings certain things to the fore. Funding. And that's why, you know, we, we, I, I said it earlier. Three years, four years, people are, are, are preparing for the next Olympics. But here, six months, two months, three months, when did we go to Germany for the uh, foreign camp? Two weeks of training. That's what we had in Germany. And then people who have been training for three years, we intend to go there and beat them. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. Now, funding. And I say something. We must give something to this government. Give it to them. Money was released. We had 12 billion. So, in fact, that's, one, that's what is making people more agitated. There's so much money. At the last Olympics, they were given 2 billion. Forget about the devaluation of the Naira. Mm -hmm. But no government, I, I mean, in my own uh, this thing, from my own experience, has given so much to sports within a short time. But I will tell you that the only challenge, and that's because that's what has been the practice. Rio. The money for Rio Olympics was given when the team was already in, 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 uh, in uh, Brazil. But this time around, I hear money was released about a week or a, some days to the Paris Olympics. Now, that money, part of it was meant for preparation, training, and all that. If you bring that money at that time, what are you going to achieve? So, for me, what I want to appeal, government has done well. They've, at least for, for once, they've shown that sports should be given some form of attention. Timing for release of funds is very critical. If it's released late, okay. you will not achieve much. And then two, he said, he said something about funding. So this, uh, you talked about mobile. You must create an enabling environment for the private sector to be interested. If it's not, if, then infrastructure. I mean, these are things. So look at the stadium. He just said it now. He gave an example. I, I told somebody, we don't have a single badminton playing facility in Nigeria. If you have a badminton hall that is dedicated, dedicated for badminton, it's a private member club where nobody can just go in. It's not open to the public. So, and it's one thing that we, as a federation, we, are, we, we have been working on to at least they have a home. And he talked about high-performance high center. Those are the places we try to send our players to abroad to be able to be competitive. There's none here. There's none in Africa for badminton. Oh, no Francis, uh, Francis so, you know, Amo, um, yeah. do we have uh, a slew of young badminton players that... Um, uh, we can bank on in the years to come. You know, because I remember the days of Egbeyemi, you know, he was very yeah. popular, he was an African champion, and he reigned for years. Do we have some young uh, badminton players coming through at this time to reignite? Yes, we have. That, in uh, fact, era. yes, we have. I, I, I must tell you that uh, as a federation, uh, since last year, we started a program, uh, Shuttle Time. And that program is specifically targeted at schools. 
So we are taking badminton to the grassroots. So we go there, introduce the game, we bring equipment, we teach the t uh, games masters, we bring some students to train, and then we release equipment to them to go and start the game in their schools. Yes, we started that. Then we have age grade. So right now we have younger players who are waiting. I mean, once Anu is leaving the scene, they are ready to step in. We just have those group under age, under 15, under 19. And that is the only way. But I can tell you something, that in the past few years, because if you have these players, you must expose them to competition. And not only within here, you take them to the African, uh, 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 African continental yeah. uh, competitions to expose them. But if you don't do that, you can play here forever and you think you are good. The next day you go out here, you meet somebody who will just make a thank, of thank, thank you, so brother. Those are the thank you. Thank, thank you, Brother Francis. Uh, I wish you Godspeed as we prepare for uh, Los Angeles 2028. Wish you well. Many thanks as well to... Thank you to, very much. Yeah, Hassan Wada, thank you very kindly for your time, sir. My pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, then. Um, Biko, um, it was not all lost for us. Hear this one. Rene Wakama voted best coach of the women's basketball tournament. Yes, and, uh, but no I medal think, comes think, with that. No, it doesn't. You see, people, <laughs> we have to be realistic. Mm. That was the first time an African team okay. would get to the quarterfinal. Oh yeah, of uh, 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 basketball, basketball women at the Olympics. And don't forget, Angola, for example, basketball is their national sport. That's it. Okay. You know, they used to dominate everyone, but today. Nigeria is very good in, um, in, in, in basketball. We, we, at least on the continent, we are doing well on the continent. People didn't give her a chance. I believe that if they had had a better draw, mm -hmm. because to beat Australia was, was, no was, was not what anybody expected. Oh, yeah. And then they had to face the U.S. Yeah. That's the best uh, in the world, uh, you know, in, in that category. So to beat, when you encounter, the draw must favor you a little bit, okay. even when okay. you want to make progress. Mm. So if the draw had favored them a little bit, maybe they will have reached the final, or uh, they will have reached the semi-final where they can then contest for the, the bronze medal. But she's done very, very well, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. A general woman, um, and to, okay. be, to be ranked the best in, in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Best, no, no, female, I think, I think best female uh, basketball, uh, basketball coach. coach. I think she's done very well. Now yeah. we have to take it further, mm. you know, and ensure that this team does not slide. Yeah. Having been among we, the best we, eight we, in the world, uh, we have to build on that. We, we must go. We, we, mu we must go, uh, Biko. It's, uh, when you talk Nigeria and sports, you, you are near, near to tears, but mm. tears would not help anything. Oh. Uh, we must do the right thing. do the right thing. Okay. Okay, folks, that will just about do it for today's show. If you missed any part of this, not to worry. Later tonight at 11, a repeat broadcast will take your airtime. So take advantage then. And on Sunday, we expand the field for you for two hours from between 1.30 and 3.30 p.m. Uh, we are also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Citizen Jones Usain. Bye-bye now. Take care.